everybody, it's Grady with Twin Creek Audio back in the studio. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Guess what's in this box? Can you see that? Hang on. Let's uh, I'll open this up and show you what this is. Okay, let's see what's in the box. It's exactly like it says. Amiga 500. Now, I didn't just get this or anything, so it's not like it was just shipped to me in this box. This is just uh, the box that's been in, in the closet. And I think it's time to bring it out of the box, pick it up, and see if it still works, for one thing. And if it does work, see what we can do musically with it, because I've got a pretty cool software synth and a drum machine program. It's kind of dusty. There she is. Commodore Amiga 500. Hmm, let's see if this still works. So the good old Amiga 500. I bought this used in the late 90s, and uh, the last time I used it, I regret to say, was about four, maybe five years ago. I used this on several album releases that I've done on several songs each, mostly using the Sonics 2 uh, synthesizer program that they made for these, Aegis made that software so this you might notice this uh, little dongle here that's because this Amiga has an ECS scan doubler by Indivision I think so that it can output a standard VGA signal and I have a little little uh, flat screen LCD monitor that works with this Amiga it's just like a 14 inch one which is perfect for this old machine so that I can use the synthesizer program and I've got a drum machine program for it too. So let's test this thing out. I'm going to try and find the rest of the cables. See over here I have a Super RAM 500RX RAM expansion for this. Put that up here. And I also have this uh, Zorro 2 expansion card. Well it's got a slot here. The, excuse me for the slot on the side of the Amiga here and then I've got a Buddha Phoenix 2 IDE controller card I don't think I'm going to test it with this because the last time I was using this rig it wasn't working so but I, I have that eventually I may try to get that to work too set that to the side and go find the power supply Here, and here is the box, the Amiga 500 power supply. You gotta have that. Oh, also the Amiga mouse. It's kind of yellowed. And here's the power supply for this thing. So we're gonna need that. Also in the box I have a 1 gig flash drive with an adapter to connect to this card. Although I think I found this after I had this card so I've never actually used the two together. But anyway, that's beside the point. Let's put these two away in the box over here and set those to the side because we're going to try and test just the Amiga here. And let me get that thing hooked up. Okay, yeah, we've got our Amiga all set up here. We've got the Amiga 500 unit itself. We've got the Super RAM expansion, RAM expansion here plugged into the expansion port on the side. The original Amiga power supply and Amiga mouse. I'm using my Twin Creek Audio mouse pad because this uh, is the actual kind of mouse with the ball on the bottom of it. So you've got to have something fairly good for that to move on. All right, let me go find a monitor for this see if she still works. Okay, as you can see, I found a little monitor that's about the right size for this Amiga. Plugged it into the little VGA dongle coming from the Indivision scan doubler card, or it's not really a card. You pull out the original video chip and put this in the socket and then put the original video chip back into the socket. 
that comes with the scan doubler. All right, um, let's see. While we're at it, let me direct your attention over to the big box of Amiga software. There might be some other kinds of software in here, but HD install tools, Workbench 3.1. Um, that's something I forgot to mention. This also has a ROM switcher between Workbench 1.3 and 3.1. There's a copy of the 3.1 boot disk. What I'm looking for is right here, Sonics 2.0. And here's a little Amiga drum machine called A Drum, kind of like this. So let's see if this thing will boot up after four or five years. Turn on the monitor. Turn on the Amiga. Give it a second. Power. Individual computers and division ECS. Now, if the floppy drive will work and this will boot, we might have a working Amiga. Nope. Not yet, anyway. Okay, well, that's as far as I got this time. The Amiga does work. It asks for the workbench disk, but the floppy drive's having trouble booting off of anything or reading anything. So, We'll have to find a solution for that before we can make any music with this thing. But it does turn on and work, so that's a good sign. See what I can do about cleaning or replacing this floppy drive. They make a GoTech unit you can buy for these, and you can use a USB stick with Amiga disk images on it. So, one of those two things, and then I'll be back and demonstrate the Amiga.